Hey friends. I, um, it's the end of the weekend. I have one more day at home before flying to Toronto, Canada to have a surgery, a light surgery, nothing major or too scary. Um, but it's, but it has given me, you know, in, in an interesting way, and I know I've probably gone on about this over the past couple of days, it's given me a kind of, just a little window of reflection into what, you know, not, not so much the event itself, not so much what it means to be undergoing this, but just what it means to be alive. You know, there's a way in which being, heading into something that is, that is inevitably a threshold, right? It's inevitably, I'm going to go in, I'm going to come out, and I'll be in a different place. <laughs> then there'll be some recovery. Um, that just puts me in a certain kind of state of mind, and it, 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 I think it's given me a certain kind of softness. I don't know. I mentioned, I, I, I think I mentioned on my post maybe four or five days ago, I had told my daughter that this was happening and sort of presented it last week, early in the week, to kind of give us a week to talk about it. And I've been really touched by how often she said, I don't want you to go. I have, um, while I don't, you know, enjoy seeing her, you know, have either, it's not really fear, it's just she's going to miss me, I think. While I don't enjoy seeing her have, you know, be sad about it, it's obviously very, very sweet to me that she has that response. And it's given, you know, every time, again, as, as, as part of this looking at what happens and what, what goes, you know, how I go into this, it's been really, it's been really beautiful to, to understand what's happening to me in the context of my family. And that's something that I've, you know, it's, you, you can't have kids and not start to think this way. You can even think this way without having kids, right? You can kind of understand your everything that happens to you in a context and in a context of close-knit relationships and the effects that the thing that your life ha has on all of your close-knit relationships but something about having a kid man it really takes that process to 11. <laughs> it, it, at least for me it makes me feel so just woven in to a to a fabric and what happens to me affects the whole fabric and you know that's one of those it's one of those things where again if if you've caught my post over the last couple of days kind of an unrelated um, or seemingly unrelated area of focus for me recently has been you know I talked yesterday about how about the, the 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 period of time in which I sort of sorted out my issues around romantic love around women around some of the delusions some of the some of the fictions some of the baggage and bullshit that I had tied up in romantic relationships for I would say pretty much all of my life or at least starting very early from the time that romantic relationships were a thing in my life <laughs> they, there was this stuff bound up in them 
And, and there was a period of time, a very kind of clear chapter. It was two, three years, but it was a, it was a clear chapter in which that I'm done. It was like, I'm done with that. I don't want to, I'm not going to wrestle with that anymore. I met my wife. We fell in love. We're still in love. It's like that area of my life just really did. And I am, as I, as I said in my post yesterday, there was a voice in my head that kind of told me, you know, this is the decision you got to make if you want to get this really sorted. And I did. Um, and so, and I, and I related that in my post yesterday to other areas of my life where I feel like I'm still kind of waiting to, for it to lock in 100%. With that same 100% clarity. And something like going and having surgery away from my family, it puts that stuff in perspective. It just kind of I think the main effect is, and I've noticed this over the last day or two, is a, is a softness. It's a sense of like, all of us have a self that projects outward, right? We have a, we have a persona, we have a personality, we have an ego, we have aspects of ourself that sort of comprise the, um, the image that we attempt <laughs> to show the world. Now, we all know that if people are really looking carefully, they're going to see right through that. But that doesn't prevent most of us from giving it a good go and trying to project a certain whatever. But... That aspect of myself in many ways dissolves or at least it sort of <sighs> breathes out, relaxes when I'm facing something that's you know, kind of significant. It's going to take me away from my family for a while. They're going to be thinking about me. I'm going to be thinking about them. There's just, there's just a kind of softening into my real self. I think that's the theme that I want to highlight. the utility of, of something like this beyond just the fact that it's a thing that's going to help me as a, as a procedure, it's going to, you know, make me, it's going to repair something and keep me healthy as a human being. It's also this connecting with a part of myself that is, that is, just not concerned with what I project. It's concerned with what's real to me. It's concerned with who I really am, what I really think, what I really want. Not There's no time in, in, or space in there for for a lot of self-concern or in terms of like the ego's self. So I think, you know, that, that, that confers or that, that in, instills a certain amount of gratitude in me. It kind of just place, puts me in a place where I'm like, okay, this is all 
It's all about being real right now. I, I don't have a choice. I don't have a, it's like it takes away my impulse to project anything other than what's real. And you sort of see through the, the ruse of that process. I think it's having to give over to something. You know, there's a way in which the involuntary surrender or, or not the, the inevitability of, of surrender kind of nudges me into voluntary surrender. And that happens on a lot of levels. It's not just the level of this event. It's everything else. It's, it'll be interesting. You know, I'll keep doing posts as I get closer to it. I don't, I don't, look to, I don't have the actual surgery until Thursday, but But it'll be really interesting to see how this kind of continues to affect me. I will tell you more when I know more. But clearly this is my next big threshold. So, But I think inevitable surrender, the inevitability of surrender is really what's operating here. If I look at like what seems to be having the effect that it's having. It's knowing that I have to surrender to something that's kind of big and anticipating that in some ways already kind of going there, already kind of psychically surrendering. And then <laughs> that I can't just be in my normal state once I go there, it's like, okay, well now it's kind of hard to just like go back to being in what would maybe be a more habitual state. So again, feels like an awfully great opportunity and a beautiful thing to have an opportunity to experience. Thanks for watching folks. Appreciate you. Have a great day. See you soon.